preparing to live stream the meeting. <laughs> um, Preparing to live stream the meeting. <laughs> um, right, as you can hear, it, it's got a bit of a lag, so it does pick up from earlier. Right, we're back. It's 2.15 and I'm going to hand over to the wonderful director, Rachel Lincoln, uh, to take you through um, a discussion with the directors from today's work. Rachel, over to you. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, so first of all, what would be lovely to do is for each of you guys to introduce yourselves as directors and what project uh, and show you directed. Uh, first of all, that would be amazing. Whoever wants to start. Or maybe Maya, you start because you're next to me on my screen. <laughs> um, I'm Maya. I directed a play called Repeat After Me, If Not um when it's a radio play um written by Layla Biggs and yeah great Jess okay <laughs> hi my name is Jess um I directed God's Garbage which was written by Martha Maloney and it's a film yeah <laughs> great um Luca uh, hello, my name's Luca. Uh, I directed Tenebrosity, written by the wonderful, the amazing Zach Shatui. Great. Last one. Hi, <laughs> my name is Kieran. I directed W by Ruby Sutcliffe. Brilliant. That's lovely, lovely to um, introduce your work. And it was so fascinating and uh, brilliant to be able to watch your pieces and like what creativity and kind of amazing work has gone into uh, creating these pieces. So what would be amazing is to start off, um, maybe, I don't know, Luca, maybe you can tell me a little bit about uh, your show and how you created it and everyone else can chip in um, talking about the creation process. But first of all, tell us a little bit about what your uh, show was about. Cool, uh, so Tenebrosity is about kind of mental health. That's kind of the main subject and the effects it has on a child as well as their parent and that kind of dynamic. Um, originally, the play, the play is written, it's very experimental, kind of abstract, uh, and there's meant to be a lot of physical theatre in it, um, which unfortunately we just couldn't do because of what's kind of the situation we're in. Uh, so a lot of the kind of rehearsals, we had to kind of figure out what we're gonna do instead. Um, eventually, I decided on animation because I thought that kind of captures the same uh, ideas of physical theatre. So we had to kind of discuss what images we could use and kind of what represented what. Uh, and I think it worked out quite well. Um, and then because we lost out on that physical theatre aspect, it was kind of a lot of emphasis on character instead. Um, yeah, I guess. Brilliant. Yeah. That sounds amazing. So the use, like I, I saw your use of animation and um, stop motion animation, and it's interesting to find out that you actually were sort of using it instead of doing physical theater. Can you tell us a little bit about who, who did the animation? Who drew, oh. like, tell, tell, tell us about that, because it was a wonderful, like, use of concept and a way to tell the story that was absolutely beautiful to watch in, in like, alongside the scenes. Uh, so I did the animation. I have it here. They're all kind of on oh, big books of drawings. There you go. Um, and yeah, it's just me drawing on paper, then take a photo, draw another piece, take a photo. Um, very time consuming process. Um, Isn't it like... An in Sorry, continue, continue. So it's also quite an insecure process because I'm not a very good artist. So I draw something and be like, oh no, that's terrible. And I have to throw it away and do it again <laughs> and again. Um, yeah, but very time consuming and very kind of, uh, it takes a lot out of you. What inspired, yeah, so what, when did you, when was the moment where you thought, actually, I want to use this? Um, so looking at, I looked at the physical theatre and I thought, okay, there's no way we can do that to the standard that Zach, sh it needs to be. Because what Zach did was amazing. And I thought if we tried it and it didn't really capture that same uh, essence it would kind of be a letdown so we had to kind of change it completely mm. and what it was is to me physical theatre is about um, 
speaking without words and how can you capture something without saying it and to me animation is the natural kind of uh progression so building off of that I, there's i watched a bunch of short films on uh, a website called short film of the week kind of all animated stuff really? um adventure time was a big oh, was uh, inspiration uh yeah that sort of stuff and just trying to capture that same quality of expression i guess Oh, brilliant. And that's what a wonderful way to adapt, like having gone, OK, we we can't make it in real life. This is a, this is another way to show that. It's brilliant. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Luca. Um, Maya, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, your your show and how you developed it? Um, yeah, so mine was a radio play. We were given the option of turning it into a film or a radio play. So I decided to do um, a radio piece because the play itself is basically a collection of conversations between characters so it follows like four um different stories that don't intersect they're like um individual in their own right um but all of the stories are around the topic of women having children and the pressure that they're under to have children or when that's taken away due to infertility and stuff like that it discusses all those themes but in conversation so I thought it would work really well as a radio play just because you don't really need that visual and there's something really like um atmospheric about all the pauses and the tension that's built up when you can't see the characters it's kind of like in your imagination and I think the main vision that I had was I wanted everything to sound authentic so that people who listen to it could feel that they could have those conversations themselves mm -hmm. with people close to them something that they could learn from or mimic so I wanted it to feel really natural so that it was something that they could like relate to um, and I was also really lucky that um, I was in the workshop group with the writer of the play I was directing. So I saw her process, I saw um, things that she removed, things that she added in, like, um, and her vision throughout that. So I think my vision was always going to be um, kind of like a reflection of um, what she'd been telling me, which I found quite helpful as well. But she also allowed me to give freedom. So yeah, it was a really good experience. That's brilliant. So can you tell us a little bit more about what that is to actually workshop with a writer in a room and what and how you did that and how you saw the piece develop and its themes? Um, I thought it was really um, interesting because at first I was like, oh, is this going to kind of um, be a barrier? Am I just going to try and like replicate what she told me or am I actually going to try and find my own like mark on it? Um, which I think I did because during the workshop, um, it was when we first started to write our play. So um, I was with her when she had a completely different idea and it turned into this idea. So um, I think it was helpful just to see the stepping stones and to, this, to see how um, she wanted um, things to link because we also managed to put some scenes up on their feet. So she kind of gave us an idea of um, the, the naturalistic like, feel that she wanted to have. So I thought that was really good. Great. And then so from that, you sort of took it and then you thought this is the right kind of feeling for, for how yeah. to direct it. That's brilliant. Great. And what was it like directing as radio? How did you how did you do that? Um, well, I found it a little tricky at first because it's harder to do characterization exercises when you're not like physically with the person you're trying to connect with. So we did quite a lot of exploring of ways that we could kind of get those connections because um, connections in the play is a very important theme. Like these characters are all like, um, um, related to each other quite closely and there's like this element of trust without the piece so I wanted to try and achieve that through um, rehearsals which I think I did manage to do because on Google Meet you can kind of like make separate rooms so you can kind of um, I did this exercise where I put them in a room with their like scene partners um, and I made them just like talk to each other and kind of like share how they were feeling that day just kind of open up themselves so that their characters could then open up to each other which I thought was quite a good um, exercise and the whole process like it just felt like we were this like massive like unit just like the people in the play and yeah it was a great yeah it was really good. That's an amazing experience and to be able to kind of in some way create an exercise and to be able to ha have things happening in different places is amazing. Uh, question for later oh we've got a question for later coming through so we'll uh, yeah that's a great question we'll, we'll come to that question in just a moment. Um, so uh, how about you? Th thank you, Maya. That's super interesting yeah. to hear how that <laughs> development happened. Um, Jess, do you want to tell us about uh, the show you directed and what the process oh. of making it was like? Um, so I directed the play 
um, <clears throat> called Savage by Martha Maloney, who's an amazing writer. And um, my whole cast was female. So it was a massive bonding experience, to be honest. I think we all became really close through the whole process, even though it was really stressful. <laughs> we, wanted, we got we got through it we got through it so it was good um but no I was lucky to have a really amazing director and not director writer sorry and um cast and um I couldn't have done any of it without them but so it was originally meant to be a play and um the style of the way that the play was meant to be put on was very specific it was meant to have like a massive bench on stage and that would like kind of turn over around the play and obviously we couldn't we couldn't exactly do that because of COVID. So we had to think about how we would show the play instead. So as um, Maya said before, it was between like a radio or a film. And I was thinking about doing a radio at first, but then when I spoke to the cast, they felt much better doing a film. And I was slightly inspired by, I don't know if anyone else has watched this film, um, this horror film called Unfriended. I was slightly inspired by the concept of that film, of it all being online, as if like the audience is watching the characters through the camera. Mm. So I wanted to kind of give that kind of feeling that the audience is kind of watching these characters living their life and is kind of, um, what's the word, observing mm. what's going on in the play. And I, try, I tried hard to, <laughs> to show that. Um, so we filmed Google Meets, we filmed FaceTime calls, we filmed Instagram chats. It was it was a lot of a lot of you know technology malfunctions. You know Wi-Fi is down, etc. And um, but at the end of the day, we got it all done, and I'm really happy with what we created. That's yeah. brilliant. And so tell me a little bit more about how the themes of the show kind of relate to this this bench original bench idea and how you kind of yeah because you mentioned obviously you were able to kind of translate that into yeah the way that this feeling of the audience like the voyeur and stuff so tell us a little bit more about the themes well the themes well it, it's about the whole play is about um this group of girls and then the main character biz who's it's just kind of her life you know school and then her family etc and I think because it was written for such like a young cast it made it really easy for everyone to kind of relate to it in some way. So it wasn't too far of a stretch. So everyone was kind of playing their age group apart from one person in the cast, um, which made it really easy. And then when we were thinking about obviously staging, uh, as much as I would have loved to use a bench, it was obviously not possible to do. Yeah. So I kind of think of a way that was easier to transition the scenes switching because obviously that whole bench was a main like was the main subject of the well not the main subject the main object in the play mm. um and it was kind of like the of the the staging that kind of transitioned the whole play so I try to think of a way that would be easy to transition from scene to scene um which was obviously technology so I thought it was it would be easy to have a FaceTime call and then like a group chat because everyone always has a uh, is that everyone's always online I think it's something that's very consumed um the world and everything so I thought that it would be really interesting to see if we could have like a FaceTime call and then like a group WhatsApp and then kind of like a personal scene um and for scene five I don't know if anyone watched it <laughs> for scene five it was meant to be a very physical um scene and so I got the actor who plays Biz mm -hmm. um Oriana to film herself in her room and I was very specific I told her don't move your laptop just press pause press play and just move around your room because mm -hmm. I still wanted to keep that essence of the audience is watching her and it's kind of they're kind of seeing her whole life unfold and seeing her like go through all these stages as if the audience is continue watching her so it's kind of like this the audience is obviously watching her life through the whole experience and they at no point are the audience really acknowledged it's kind of just biz just talking her mind at one point yeah. but yeah so when it came to staging and kind of transitions I wanted to keep them very simple and very like um smooth I don't know if I achieved that I might have not you know that's great <laughs> well, well done. Well well done. <laughs> oh that's great Jess thank you yeah. and um for some reason your name is it's K I can only see K here yeah, it's because it's got, I've tried to change it, but it will let me. It's Kieran. Kieran. Oh, Kieran. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Kieran. Um, um, tell us about your show and your process. So I directed the play W, uh, written by Ruby. And um, it was, 
the process it what happened was is that it was sort of at the start i was i must admit i was a bit stuck on how i was going to present this because i did want to do it film version rather than radio play because i just i just wanted to do a film i just think i just thought it would be more fun to do and like more of a challenge something different yeah. to try and at first i was very stuck on like how to actually present this I remember just because because I got lucky because in the play that I directed, it's a lot of monologues. Mm. So it meant the online rehearsals were slightly more easy than someone who's got maybe whole cast moments because obviously I could work with people individually on their monologues. So I began just working on people's monologues and trying to get them to a point where I like quite like them. Mm. And then like just one night I was just lying in bed and it just like came to me the idea about doing this sort of like because the concept of the um actual play is the thing about it being like these characters, these objects interviewing and telling their stories. So I just came yeah. up with the idea of doing it like, I'll just do it, I'll do it like basically like that. But I'll show like there's a waiting room scene, which are the, you know, the Zoom meetings or the yeah. just the meetings. And then there's obviously the moments where it's just them in shot. And I was like, I like quite like the, I just came up with this bit of transitioning between like a waiting room and like a, um, like a, a, do you know, like an actual show, like as if they're getting interviewed for a performance. Mm. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was really tricky to get the process because I would, um, um, I asked for quite a lot of like, there was, it was hard to get everything together. Cause I felt like obviously doing it online, having to communicate people online meant that like, I think it, it was really hard to get everything together so I could start editing as soon as I could, or so I could start working on the whole thing, thing as a whole. So that was, that was one of the main difficulties was just sort of like, um, I struggled to get, get all the footage and everything I needed. But obviously in the end, I got it and, and it was all good. But yeah, the process was, quite long and it was really hard for me like it stressed me out but there were some points where I was like I'm not gonna have time to edit it's gonna be like oh it's all gonna go wrong there was not really any quite normal that, I did have time quite well yeah because I did have time um and yeah I mean it was long but like I did enjoy it like it was really good fun like we had we enjoyed rehearsals and we you know we did get we got some good work done so I was quite happy with how it was in the end so yeah. your piece was based around Tracy Emin's Unmade Bed yes Right, yeah. so Tracy Emin, the artist, and the objects that were were surrounded her uh, in her unmade bed, um, Turner winning prize piece of mm -hmm. artwork. Artwork, right? Do you want to talk yeah. a little bit more about the kind of those th that st the story of it um, as well? Tell us a little I, bit. Let yeah. us into the the writer's mind. Um, I mean, I thought the story. I think the idea was really interesting. Like, because um, I'd, I'd never heard of this piece of art before, and. I just had to look into it because it was what part of it was based off. Yeah. It was really interesting. Like the whole idea of it was really interesting. Like I put some interviews with her at the start, yes. uh, like audio under the opening scene. And, and that was just great quite, to give some yeah. context. Give mm. context. And just interviews like that. And, and it was just really interesting to see how like this um, bed came about and like the idea behind it. But what I found is that although the concept, the idea behind the bed is quite a depressing one, Do you know, the idea that she was really depressed. She locked herself in a room for like, oh, couple of days blah blah uh, you know I mean um yeah mm. but so it, it was really depressing but what I found is that due to the writing and the way it was it was per it was made in a comedic style yeah so absolutely. I found myself not actually focusing as much on the artwork as inspiration if that makes sense like obviously it was there and, and I did refer to it and I did look at it for like see oh how could I show this or this but overall it was more sort of a because I saw the comedy in it more than I did anything serious Mm. and so however bad it may sound it's based off that I didn't actually use the artwork it didn't help me as much as I thought it would does that make sense but, but it was sort of a jumping off point because you have yeah 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 the bottle the the mm. alcohol bottle who yeah yeah, yeah. Drunk, right who's drunk throughout so you've got you've got ways of showing these mm. like different aspects of the objects as separate but still part of that whole so yeah so yeah that yeah um so yeah, obviously I use it as inspiration, but just as the, the whole idea and the kind of feeling behind the artwork, what did touch on it, but I just felt like the main thing was more for it to just be sort of an entertaining piece, you know, just get a laugh out of people, have a bit of fun. Yeah. And um, the writing really helped with that, because I mean, it was really funny. Like it was, it was good writing, great writing. Really. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, mm. so, so, I mean, now we've had like a little bit of an introduction to your to your shows and your processes. Maybe we'll just throw it out to some questions that have just popped up here in the screen. Um, first question, and whoever wants to jump in and have a thought about this, and you can absolutely kind of chat together about this. Question one, what was it like directing and leading a cast of your friends? 
Uh, oh, okay. Um, I actually really enjoyed it because I was worried at the start as well, just as I could just think a general thing. I think many directors were. That obviously, it'd be hard. With your, um, with your cast. So, oh, sorry, I just blanked out. I blanked out. That's right. There was a <laughs> little sound, a little technical issue. Do you yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Can you, can you hear me still? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. yeah, I'm good. yeah. We can hear cool, you. Cool, cool. Okay, so as I was saying, sorry, um, I had a great time with my cast and I feel, I feel like many directors might have been a bit worried about it. I was certainly a bit worried at the start about working with colleagues. It was a bit like, it was just part of me was like, oh, I don't know if I feel that comfortable like telling them what to do. But in the end, the cast I got were really, really great. I mean, they did all the work, they listened to me. They turned up, they went to rehearsals. So I got, I got really lucky. I mean, I didn't have any problems working with cast. It was just like... It was like working with just professionally with a cast, but at the same time having the side thing of being able to have like jokes and have a laugh around. So I actually really enjoyed the rehearsal process. I hope my cast did too. Oh. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that is always yeah. the fear for a director. You always think, I hope you enjoy working with me. <laughs> well, you, we all, we all, I guess, as directors, just want to like make the rehearsal room as kind of constructive and positive as we can that's great anyone else um and also if you're working with your friends like as you say what's it like to tell your friends what to do or how do you find that collaboration um what do you find hard what do you find difficult any of you other guys have you got any thoughts um i think for me i was like i had this mindset of um we're all in the same place like at school like I don't technically know any more than you do to be giving you like this direction for you to take it. But um, my cast was brilliant. Like they listened to what I said. They um, they challenged things that they didn't um, think um, were right. And we talked about it and it was like an open like rehearsal room. Like if they had notes, they could give them to me. And then they listened to the ones that I gave them. But at first I was a bit like, oh, do I really have the like knowledge to be telling you like how to do these things but how did you find that how did you find that you got that knowledge when did you when did you find how did you what did I you think, to do it um after the first like couple of um weeks like because for the first week I just wanted to like have discussions about the themes and just so everyone felt like comfortable and it was a lot of like playing charades and like games and doing just dances and stuff and I think after that that and we all became like comfortable with each other and um, I kind of already started to gauge that they were listening to what I was saying. There was like a level of respect that you could just feel from them. And I think after that, I became more confident. And I was like, right, okay, they're going to like, um, they want me to do what I'm meant to do. So I feel like I can confidently do it now because they want me to. Great. That's great. That's really nice. Building in confidence. That's a <laughs> wonderful skill to bring away from this process. Um, any, anyone else, any other challenges of working with friends? But maybe not. Maybe it was like there are. <laughs> I don't know if you want to say anything. So I was just a bit. I, like, I was I, waiting for Jess to say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, a bit like what Maya said. Um, when it comes to friends, we all like school friends, but I didn't necessarily know everyone very well. So I was kind of, it was kind of like a learning experience. I felt like I got to understand people in my class a lot better, especially as like friends. And obviously, when you're kind of all the same age and in the same class, you're a bit hesitant about how you're going to direct and like how you're gonna address certain issues because you don't necessarily know any better than them because you're the same age, you're all doing the project all together and you're not necessarily an authoritative figure. So you're, you're not a teacher. So I was a bit worried about how they would kind of take my directions and how I'd be kind of treated and how I would treat them because I wanted to still treat them as people and as cast as friends but also kind of keep that balance of I'm the director etc um but yeah it was it was kind of stressful trying to like get ideas out and trying to see if communication was good um but I probably wouldn't change it to be honest I feel like I've I got to know loads of people in my cast and I think I've grown stronger with them and it's it's always good to you know get to know people and yeah <laughs> that's brilliant that's great um let's let's move on to the next question question number two um how did you go about finding the overall vision for your pieces um I'll go for this one um yeah. I think it was a lot of finding external kind of inspiration. Uh, so kind of like what films 
do I think this is like or what pieces of artwork and then almost like mushing it together and seeing what kind of big gooey all of ideas it produced mm. um so that was one way and also I think looking at the subject matter as well and thinking okay what's appropriate to this so I think my piece is quite hectic and it's kind of all over the place and it's um a lot of stuff going on and I think that was works quite well with the idea of it being kind of in your head yes. and like you it's never have a steady train of thought it kind of bounces all over the place and um yes yeah, so that's how I got my vision right great thank you anyone else and how did I mean how did you kind of take the writer's vision and how do how do you navigate that kind of here's what the writer's giving me and here's what I'm bringing to it how what did you find interesting or challenging about that um well oh. oh, jump in Kieran um I was going to say that in terms of the vision of the director in comparison to my vision I feel like they were actually really similar because mm. I, I don't know if Rue would agree with me but I thought that the ideas behind what I wanted to do were quite similar so for me I didn't find I, I didn't have much difficulty finding sort of my own style in it but also showing the writer's vision because I feel like as I said they were quite similar with maybe yeah. like slight little changes like maybe add an extra line in here or or a slightly extra scene here but overall I feel like we had the same sort of idea Right. I don't know, as I said, I don't know if the writer would agree, but that's how I felt anyway. But um, so yeah, in terms of coming up with a vision that like went with the director, as I said, I didn't have much difficulty. In terms of coming up with the idea, like my vision personally, just overall, I was, didn't wasn't really inspiration or anything. It kind of just came to me, as I said earlier. I was just lying in bed, and the idea just came to me, and then I had a really clear vision of how I wanted it to be. Right. How and nice those like, moments. Those moments. Those aha moments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're lovely when you get those. That's amazing. That's great. And um, how about you, Maya? How did you find your vision? Um, like I said before, working with Layla in the script workshop made everything um, so much um, clearer for me. But um, I was talking to her after we'd um, been given the plays that we were directing. Oh, Maya, we've lost you there. Are you there? Well, Jess, why don't you pick up on that? Okay. Um, well, when it comes to the play that we were as directing, it was kind of we had to go through the script and see what kind of worked with the concept, the the the, the version of the play we wanted to put on, and what didn't. So I obviously got permission from Martha to slightly edit some lines and you no know, takeaway lines that might not work or might not make sense. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of a tedious process, but it had to be done. So with one of the scenes when it was on um, Instagram, I a group chat, we kind of had to, with lines that were cut off, we had to either extend the lines or make them shorter because obviously you can't cut some off on text. So it was kind of adapting the play very, very slightly just to, yeah, just to fit the kind of, concept of the play and the, the version that we were trying to show um but yeah that's it <laughs> Fab, we seem to have lost Maya I hope that she can jump back in the call soon oh is she is she coming back yeah she's back oh why sorry I oh. know my wife I cut out oh no no worries what we'll do is we'll move into the next question um and then maybe Maya you can jump in with this question um how much do you communicate with your plays right <laughs> for advice or influence, if at all? How much did you? Oh, you there, Maya? Oh, we've got some technical issues with Maya. Luca, do you want to answer that question? Uh, yeah, um, so I, I spoke to Zach when I thought it was necessary because what I was concerned about was his vision was so clear for the stage and I was worried that if I kept asking him questions about like, how do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? It wouldn't, he would only have to, he would have to give me advice on a piece which wasn't his vision anyway. Uh, okay. So I felt guilty that I was having to ask him questions that he was going to have to think up on the spot. Mm. Um, but I did kind of ask, um, which I found really helpful, kind of like what his inspirations were. Uh, right. And so that I could try and capture an attempt to capture the essence of his play mm -hmm. because there was no way I was going to get the same same thing which is so unfortunate because his play was so amazing and uh, it was really great um but yeah I, I spoke to 
Zach when I when I needed. But that's great. Getting inside, getting inside the writer's mind, trying to understand where they come from is such a is such a useful tool for us as directors. That in, if they're with their permission, obviously, <laughs> trying to find out as much as possible is so so useful. That's great. We've got quite a few more questions coming in, so I, I might just. So we'll have like maybe one or two people answering the questions, if that's all right. So we'll just move th through to the next question. Um, question four, what would you say that the change from stage to either video or voice, um, that the ori original message or themes of the play changed or took on new meaning? So, um, yeah, so we've spoken a little bit about this as in, for, for example, this Instagram, the, 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 yeah. the chat and having to adapt in that way. So. Um, so what would you say that the change from stage to either video or voice that the original message or themes of the play changed or took on new meaning? Yeah, absolutely. And how did you find that the themes, yeah, themes changed slightly or? I mean, the personally, I tried my best to keep the themes of the play just how Martha wanted them. I didn't want to, because obviously it was, it had already changed so much when it came to staging that I tried really hard to keep the same message and keep the same um themes and everything I think it slightly became a bit more about um more about not online but more about her life yeah. at home because obviously we don't really get to see all the girls in the in school together yeah. so it kind of came more about um what business life is like at home um mm -hmm. but then again I people might have seen it slightly different that's how I kind of saw it but when it comes to changing it from a stage to a video um you find some things become very tedious very very quickly and there was one scene where um it was, it was the Instagram scene again keep mentioning that it was the sound effects of like the set the messages being sent and received I had to individually go through and put those sounds in and that was probably the most tedious thing I had to do the whole time. But you know what? I hope I hope it paid off. But yeah, when it comes to the original message and theme, I don't. I mean, it might have changed, but I tried really hard not to make it change because I think that wasn't that that wasn't really my job to change at all. It was just really my job to kind of do Martha's play a bit of like justice and like show her play and everything. Yeah. But I want. Yeah, but I suppose with all this video and all this other technology you get a sense of someone more, I suppose, a more personal view or a more personal life. And that's the kind of thing that I suppose this video allowed you to achieve that maybe having it on stage wouldn't quite have done in the same way. Great, anyone else got an answer for that question? How the themes or the message kind of changed? I, um, I, was, just gonna, I was just gonna say that for me, I don't feel like it, the messages did, the themes and message did really change because it was very similar to what it would have been like on stage. Obviously it was different because I had to do it online, but the same concept of going between the sort of waiting room area to the filming area, mm. that was all the, uh, that was the same. In terms of the messages, I don't think that there was enough changes made. It, the, being online didn't create enough changes for there to be a major change in themes or issues or topics that the play was exploring. Uh, the, um, yeah, the play was exploring. That makes sense. Yeah, totally. You don't find they change much. I think they would stay similar. Great, great. Let's move on to the next question. Um, question five: How did you guys find casting? Did you feel limited in the fact you had already been given a group to work with, which may not match the characters? I, I didn't feel limited, but the problem I had with my one is that. I had less cast members than there were characters, which is why I had to be in some of the moments, which added more work. But obviously, because if there was a moment where I was getting stressed, I was like, are you sure the numbers are right? Am I not missing someone in my group? Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I had to like realize, oh, I might have to, you know, get involved in this, I might have to find an alternative, which was tricky. But in terms of casting the other characters, I didn't really struggle that much. And what, because what I did is I did, maybe I did like a few read-throughs with the plays, maybe with, with um, each, um, person in my we did a read through or we did yeah. two read throughs and I listened to how they read the scenes and I just I basically just based it off that to be honest I didn't feel limited at all I mean like I feel the cast I had did do you know like they did it justice and I feel like everyone you know did their role well Brilliant. and it was quite easy for me to hand out roles I didn't really have any difficulty it didn't feel like the casting was so specific like ever like like in the same way that obviously all females in um in Jess's show for example um, not, Maya. Oh yeah, yeah. Not, not in that same way. 
<laughs> I'm going to pass over to Maya. Maya, are you back with us? I am. Great. As, you, as you're here for now, can we hear what you thought about um, how did you find casting? Um, I actually found casting um, really interesting. Um, so what I got them to do is I, um, we did like quite a long read through where we read through scenes more than once and I got different people to read them. And I did kind of like switch around um, who I wanted playing which character um, quite a few times. But um, I wanted to kind of give, um, because I felt like there were some people in my group who didn't necessarily often have like the time to shine. And I thought that um, they really did have the potential to do that. So I wanted to give them like a big part. And I thought that that worked really well. Um, and I think something about um, doing it over radio, it kind of takes away that um, initial like consciousness that you feel like people are like looking at you. So it like meant that um, because you could just hear their voice, they weren't um, anxious, which meant um, their performance was a lot more truthful because they were more relaxed. So um, yeah, I thought that was really good. That's interesting. That's a whole, it's a whole different, world to have to go in um casting yeah casting wise and listening to people's voices and how was that to kind of push their push their like cast cut through voices I guess thinking um, it, about who's yeah um it was really um interesting um because I tried to um do this thing where I got them um to say some of the lines and I would like close my eyes and imagine I was listening to it as a radio piece or I'd get them to turn their cameras off um, and actually, to be honest, like all of their voices worked really well for radio, like everything was clear and everything. We did loads of um, voice exercises, but um, Brilliant. their voices worked really well for radio and everything was really clear. So I was really happy. Wonderful. Great. Now it's question six. Um, were there moments where you lost inspiration, hit a wall if, or hit a wall? If so, how did you come out of that mindset? Great question. We all have those moments where we're like, oh, or is it gonna I think Luke, um, I think you were mentioning some something along that line, those lines a little bit earlier on. Yeah, um, I think definitely in the early stages when we was when I was trying to discover that track, it was very tough and it did feel like an impossible task because I'd choreographed all these movement sequences and I'd done all the staging I'd made a Lego set with all the actors on it so I knew exactly where da, 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 da. and then it was like none of that all that research is done <laughs> get rid of it and it was like whoa Jesus yeah. um so that was hard but also I, to keep me going it was like this I am director but this isn't my piece of work this is someone mm. else's work it's a mm. great piece of work mm. I need to attempt to bring it to life and also it's my actor's work if, if I can't get through this, how can I expect them to get through this? Um, so that was my motivation and like, don't let Zach down, kind of try your best is that, that's what kept me going. Brilliant. Oh, thanks. That's great. Anyone else on that question? Yeah, uh, with me, I mean, um, similarly, it was just tricky at the start because I'd done the same thing. I'd gone through the script. I'd written out like whole plans on how we do staging, how it would happen. I mean, I wrote it all up in my annotation. So I knew I had a very clear picture so we got told it was virtual. Uh, yeah, it'd be a film. Mm. So then that was quite hard to get by. And also just coming up with the idea of how to present it until obviously I came up with that idea. And then it came a lot easier. Yeah. There was one rehearsal, which I just, it was really hard because what happened was is I had a really set plan, but then one of the cast members couldn't make it. Mm. So I turned up to this rehearsal right, with a plan of what to do. And I just, like, I just hit it. Well, I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting them not to, like, I, I just don't know what to do. Mm. And... To do that, I mean, I just I had to just had to think for a while and just try and come up with some sort of exercise that could be beneficial. And I feel like we did in the end. That's but great. There was sometimes oh. moments like that where there was just a moment where it'd be like, oh, what do I do now? Like, we've run it so many times or... But, yeah, I mean, in general, I didn't have many big moments where I was like, oh, no, what am I going to do? This is, I'm totally stuck. But it seems like it's a lot around the, the ad, ad, ad kind of adapting. And that is kind of what we've had to all do in these last few months in many different ways. So when so if there's someone who can't turn up to a rehearsal, ah, okay, we've got to adapt. We're going to have to make a show online. Okay, we're going to make a show online. It's like such a wonderful skill to learn and a skill to use because we're going to be using it all through our lives. There's one thing that is sure, <laughs> change <laughs> for sure. That's great. Um, Let's have a look, let's move on to the next question. Uh, maybe Jess, you can answer this. What 
are your personal favorite what's the your personal favorite thing about your play about the play that you do it okay oh um I don't know if I have one um I really liked the very what's the word <laughs> um, my swear very bitchy energy there is in the play I liked how it was very, very intense, some scenes. I felt that made the scene, like the whole play very interesting to see, like obviously the reaction of other characters and kind of see, you kind of learn a lot about the characters um, through the way that they speak. And I just think that- It's 15 hours. Sorry, that's my laptop. It does that every hour, please ignore that. <laughs> um, so I, my favorite thing, when it comes to scenes, I think my favorite scene was probably f number f scene five, which is obviously, it was just my, it was just biz dancing around the room, but I thought that was it was fun to experiment with that scene. I really like, but overall, I really like the concept of like the high energy, like very intense scene. Um, when it comes to the, my favorite thing about the film overall, um, um, uh, we weren't allowed to use music because of copyright reasons. Mm -hmm. And Oriana, bless her, I got her to film a bunch of her singing voice. So Martha was really sp specific in using this one song called Something For Your Mind. And I got Oriana mm -hmm. to record that song and send it to me. So all the music used is was by Oriana. And I felt so bad because I was making her learn all these lines and also record all this music. And I probably really stressful for her, but um, yeah, my whole favorite thing about the whole play was probably just, the high energy of the play. I just really enjoyed it. It was fun, something to work with. It was it was really experimental. And I was, yeah, loved it. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And and um, a couple more of you, if, if you could, oh, this is the, and if you could say one thing about like the favorite, yeah, any, anyone else with a favorite moment, a favorite moment in the, in the, sh in their show that they loved. For me, for me, uh, go for it, Maya. You can go, go you, it, Maya. Oh, okay. I think for me, um, the moments of silence that are just like um, weaved into the dialogue are so important and are so um, emotional. They're literally packed with um, emotion and vulnerability. Mm. And I think it, it really just sums up the whole message of the play, which works so well over radio as well, because you, you kind of have no choice but to acknowledge the silence and kind of yeah. what that represents for these people. So, yeah, that was those are my favorite moments. Absolutely, to especially because radio, you have nothing else. It's there, and that that space is taken. One hundred percent. That's great. And a couple more little favorite moments. I was just going to say that it's like just there's so many good lines. There's just like individual lines that just I just loved. <laughs> That's like, lovely. Like the, um, the tequila line. In yeah, what's what, do you know it? Can you say it to us now? What's the line? Um, uh, ironic because I'm being sour. That 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 whole little moment right. from that line. Or the one about um, a very grumpy game of Scrabble who lost his W and wasn't feeling. It was just like throughout the play, there were just these little moments which I just thought were so good. That's and obviously, I thought, like at first when I first read, it, I was like, "This is this is great," because I did it so much. They got to promos and be like, oh, "It's not so funny anymore." But at the beginning, and I'm sure for the people who've seen it now, yeah, just you make great little moments with like lines or a joke, which I yeah, I just loved. Brilliant. And how about you, Luca? Uh, well, it's that thing of like you have so many favorite moments. Uh, it's hard to pick. I really like the opening because I had my actors draw their characters. Yeah, oh, like, they form. did it themselves. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. all their drawings. So I thought that's quite cool because it's the actor showing you what they see of their character, character which brilliant. I thought was quite a personal moment. Yeah, and, uh, and there's similar to my like, uh, also like moments of silence uh, that Maya was saying, like. Uh, one of my actors, Addison, was a master of it. He kept, he would just do a sigh or like a, and it was like, yes, there's so much <laughs> in there. But that was kind of throughout the film. They're, they're the bits I really, really loved. That's lovely. That's lovely. Um, qu next question. What ideas did you have to give up on? I know we sort of m spoke some about this sort of adapting of things, but what are the things that you were like, I just can't do this? Because what I'd also love to know is at what point, how, where had you exactly got to at school? So I know that you'd workshop some stuff before it all changed. And so what ideas did you have to get up, give up on? And was there anything you had to give up on right at the last minute after watching the final edit or listening to the final edit and thinking, ah, this doesn't sound right or look right? If anything. Maya, do you want to jump in? Are you there, Maya? 
Oh, we will go with uh, Jess. Jump in. Okay. Um, well, there wasn't much I had to give up on. I think the only ideas that I had to give up on was at the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. We were trying to figure out like how we were going to, you know, show this play. Um, my idea of a radio show I had to give up on very quickly because <laughs> no one else, no one else in my class wanted to do a radio show, and I was like, okay, fair enough. Um, I don't know. I think. I didn't, this whole process wasn't just my, when directing it, it wasn't my idea. I was very clear that I wanted to hear from everyone else. I wanted to hear if anyone had an idea, just to let me know, like, because it was meant to be, even though I was the director, I wanted it to be kind of like, uh, kind of um, everyone's responsibility in some way. Obviously I had, I had a bit more control about the whole, the whole situation, but I wanted to hear everyone's ideas. And I wanted everyone's input on like what they thought might work, what might not work. Because again, I didn't really, this is the first time I was directing a play. I'm mostly used to directing films. So it was, I don't, I didn't really know much any, any more than the rest of my cast. So I thought that this whole process would be a lot easier if I, you know, was open with my cast and was like, hey, if you've got an idea, let me know. I mean, they probably had some ideas that they had to give up on. Um, but yeah, the whole directing process was not just my idea. I had so much help from my cast and so much help from the writer and yeah. <laughs> oh, poor Maya, sorry, Maya's, that's great. Thank you, Jess. Maya's just saying that her connection's bad. Um, and her answer is there wasn't much I had to change because it was a series of conversations, which meant I didn't have to make room for lots of physical theatre and I could keep everything Layla wanted. Great, thank you, Maya. Um, any other ideas you had to keep up, uh, give up on Luca and Kim? Um, so in, in the script, there was this moment where two characters uh, have a duet and one of them's got a spoon and it kind of gets bent and whatever. And I loved that because in my eyes, it represented the child and that they was bending this spoon and it was hurting their kid. And But for obvious reasons, we couldn't do that. And that was yeah. scrapped. And that really hurt me to get rid of that. Uh, there was a lot of animations that I did that just mm -hmm. didn't have time to be put in there. So they got scrapped. Um, but there was also a bit which I think was for the best is when they're doing like the information about mental health. Mm. I, I just storyboarded it as the hunger games because in the, yeah. in the script, they're actually, they're playing a game. Mm. Uh, so I thought, Oh, I'll do it like the hunger games. And they're all trying to run to be happy. And, mm. and I did the storyboard and it was really cool. And then I sent it over and it was very difficult. Like what I was asking was uh, too much. The, um, the moment where we have the idea in our minds, but it just in real life, it's like, really <laughs> did we think? Yeah happens so easily in here doesn't it <laughs> yeah um so i had to get rid of that and instead i did the animations which i think worked out for the best just kind of that thing of i'm glad that i couldn't do it almost mm. great how about you kieran um well there was this so i had the idea because originally as i said mentioned earlier that I, there was more characters than there were cast members mm. so originally i was going to make one of the characters in that monologue and like their performance a sort of group thing with the rest of the cast, obviously this would have been if it was on stage. So with the rest of the cast, and I, and I had these really good ideas, I was running through and I was like, oh, this would look great, this would look great, and I wrote it all down. And obviously I couldn't do that because we can't can't do physical theatre online. Yeah. So I just scrapped that idea. But just in, in general, there wasn't many ideas that I got rid of because I was pretty, like I was pretty, I knew what I was doing. So as soon as I came up with the idea, I was like, I'm going to stick with this. Mm. So there wasn't, yeah, but just that moment to start, which I think would look really good, but just obviously it's not possible online. Yeah, totally. yeah. Although I would mention that I, I do think physical theatre can be possible online. Have you seen loads? I've seen loads of dance stuff online. Have anyone else seen stuff like that? Any dance videos people have been making? But but anyway, but with your particular show, sorry, I just thought I'd mention. I don't know if anyone's seen. I've just been consuming like movement stuff online. But but yeah, totally. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, so uh, kind of like the maybe coming to our like our last question, but um. What have you learned throughout the process and how will this help you in the future? Yeah, what are the big lessons? It's, I mean, um, it's one of something you never thought you would probably end up doing. So you've made these films. Yeah, what have you learned? Uh, oh God, no one's gonna say anything. And Maya, if you want to, um, is Maya here? Oh, she's gone I again. I think she left. <laughs> um, I guess one thing that I learned through the whole process is kind of the kind of expect the unexpected in some way. Even when you think you're very prepared for something, you're not prepared enough. You just gotta be prepared in case, you know, someone's ill or someone's Wi-Fi cuts out or someone can't turn up or, or someone doesn't turn up. You just kind of be prepared on what you're gonna do in that lesson if something kind of 
comes like and ruins that plan for you so kind of have a backup plan and then a backup backup plan even if you think you're not going to need it mm. you're going to need it <laughs> 100%. But yeah, that's something I would probably going to use in the future. Just be prepared. Even when I think I'm prepared enough, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, just preparation, just, preparation, preparation. Yeah, be like five steps ahead just in case. Because <laughs> so, so many things are going to be thrown at you as a director. So many Absolutely. things are going to happen because obviously you cast have their own personal life and you have your own personal life and you have there's loads of issues going on around the world mm. that you just kind of got to be prepared just to be faced with this when some things but yeah that's really preparation massive, <laughs> massive changes over the last few months that we've had to kind of be ready for um or kind of adapt with uh, Luca and Kieran how are you what have you what have, what what will you take with you into the future what have you learned um so I know in regards to pursuing directing mm. uh, the importance of giving a good note at the start I was I was very abstract in what I was asking which you should never do it's like the worst thing you could do um <laughs> so eventually it got better and I was like okay here's a very good note or well, not very here's a clear yeah, note clear note yeah um, yeah that, uh, is that helped and yeah and also what helped was uh to just be kind because despite how stressed I was um taking like if I if I needed to phone someone just taking a brief uh, and uh, just being nice and responding if there's issues and that really helped and I think that helped my mental state as well just being oh you cut out there for the last minute uh, there, Lucas. Sorry, I said something so profound. I said something so amazing. <laughs> I love it. I tr <laughs> trust me, it's great. Yeah, into the atmosphere yeah. it will go. Uh, Kieran, how about you? Um, what will you take with you? Uh, I, I learned that I, I need to put more trust in the people I'm working with. Because obviously I trusted them, but I just found that when I was directing, I would like repeat a note or feedback a few times. And I was like, I just didn't need to do that. Like, I thought it was clear enough at first and they got it. And I just think it's because I just wanted to get my point across, I repeat. So just to Mm. Try a bit more and like maybe not be as like just not say so much um also what luke said give good notes yeah and just that like however like i was feeling so stressed but it's like however stressed out you feel like however panics like like you will find a way around it do you know what i mean so like don't worry as much Does that yeah. makes sense sort of trust in yourself trust in the actors and trust in like your plan or whatever you've got to do because i was getting really stressed at the moment and then obviously the end it turned out fine for example, yeah, the end, exactly. I'd take ages with the ending, I wouldn't have enough time, but I did. So it's mm. just little things like that, just, yeah. These sound like absolutely like amazing things to take with us into the future, you know, like being clear, finding ways to communicate clearly, like um, being prepared and trusting people and, you know, and the, the, like, it sounds like your skills have been like super, super honed through this process and probably even more so because you've had to do it at, um, at a distance it's had to make you really kind of uh, think so deeply but um, we're coming up near to the end of our chat but I just wanted to say like thank you so much for your amazing work like how ex how exciting and to hear how you made it and the all the hard work that's gone into it you can be so like obviously so proud of yourselves and the amazing creations that you've created and that you have them there the one thing about I suppose film and radio that theatre doesn't have is it kind of it's well it's there, you've got it now. It's something that you can take with you. So that's amazing and um, really well done. And um, it's a shame Maya hasn't been able to meet, like get back onto the call for the end of it. But Maya, thank you so much as well. Um, I feel like quite a normal theatery thing to do is to give a little round of applause. So <laughs> I know we, have, everyone else who's probably listening via YouTube, probably clapping right now as well. So thank you guys, thank you so much. Um, Rachel, I just want to say a massive thank you for running your workshop this morning and thank you so much for hosting this panel. And um, Rachel, also, this is the 19th year of strawberry picking. And oh my God. For those that don't know that you're a Brit Theatre alum. Yes. I imagine you probably would have been in like the seventh year, maybe? Yeah, the seventh year at the Warehouse Theatre in which I directed a play called, um, oh my God, Field, something about a field. I, can't, I should remember it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your directing debut. And now, yeah. look at you now. It was amazing. And I think I 
wrote one as well that was not oh so good and um, panelists if you can stay online i'm gonna stop the feed in just a moment um but thank you everybody for uh, coming along to listen to the panel and posing some questions if you haven't watched all the shows yet you've got a few more hours before the end of the day uh, and we look forward to launching day two tomorrow for brand new shows coming your way please do head to the website to take part in uh, the rapid rights program we'd love you to get involved on thursday um and we've got some amazing workshops again tomorrow so make sure students you've signed up um great panelists were staying here everybody else see you later